hey, hey, it's Shop Talk, baby. This is the show where it's okay to be you. We're talking from Yale to jail and from the church house to the pit house. Nothing's excluded on Shop Talk. So if you don't have a phone, I suggest you borrow one. Call in and voice your opinion live every Saturday morning from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Yeah, that's right, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Don't forget to Shop Talk with your girl, because right here, oh, we keep it real. Good morning, good morning, good morning to my lovely people. How are we doing this fine Saturday morning? We are (laughs) blessed and highly favored this morning. Okay, I see how you feeling, Sister Betty. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I see how you feeling. All right, all right. I am not mad at you. So what's been going on? Keep me, keep me. Keep me updated on your life. What'd you do this last week? Since the last time last we met. Week, yes. I worked and trying to get prepared for this move. This big move. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. You said you worked. That's it. What's exciting? That's the norm working. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I got some good news last weekend after the show. Um, I got offered something, you know, but I'm going to. Keep that under wraps for now. When it's time to live by now, I live by now. But yeah, okay. it was big. It was big. Very good. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. The um, what was I going to say? What did I have going on this week? Everything. Yeah. Every going on? everything, but I guess nothing at all. <laughs> okay. But it, it it was a it's a lot. Um let's see, what did I have going on? I had um everything. Like what do I want to do? You know, thoughts in my mind. What's the plan? Looking at the news, the media, and, and just like, oh my gosh, here we go with this. You know, they still right. talking about the whole COVID thing. But did you see the shirts that are out? They have shirts out. Now that I've seen several people in and it says they're trans vaccinated, not vaccinated, but identify as being vaccinated. I said, I can't. What's your thoughts on that? You know what? Uh, people need to stop playing. That is not cute. That is not trans vaccinated. Wow. Right. That, like, I'm not going to pretend. No, I'm not vaccinated. I'm still I'm still feeling the way I feel about that right now. I mean, I know more people are getting vaccinated, but until I am completely sure of that vaccination, mm-hmm. I'm not doing it. Period. She said she ain't doing it. You heard her. Look, I'm like, she said she ain't doing it. You heard her. Not right now. I did. It got to be another year or so before I'd be like, okay, y'all go ahead and stick me. Now I'm like needles anyway. <laughs> like, no, 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 huh? No, 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 no. <laughs> That's enough, dog. <clears throat> I heard that. That is so funny. Um, it's really interesting to me that they're um talking about Nicki Minaj real bad because of the tweet. There you go. I wanted. I was gonna say post, but you know, I get all confused with the different social media sites. Um, the tweets that are out, and um, she posted the tweet. She almost close to what twenty four followers, I believe, and um, she posted about her cousin. And I know this is old news, but I gotta bring it up. Okay, remember when she was saying about her, a friend of her cousin said that he he was getting married and became sterile or impotent. I don't know which one it was. I wasn't paying that much attention to it because he took the vaccine. Do you remember mm-hmm. that? Yeah. And so everybody's giving her the blues. However, in that, and it was re quoted, it was quoted 41,000, four, yeah, 41,000 times. Yeah, they re uh, re quoted her. You know, you know how they do the retweet thingy or whatever it's called. I hope I'm using the right terms. But um, that's what they end up, uh, they end up talking about her, and people are condemning her for her saying what she thought. Now, they said if you don't feel like um, 
They said, if you don't agree with the vaccine, just don't say anything at all. That's what most of the people are saying. Now, here's what's interesting to me. And I really want to know your thoughts, Nick, on this. Um, people are upset because she voiced her opinion. And then they say her being an influencer, follow me, her being an influencer, she need to watch what she says. But at the bottom of that, um, her tweet, and you guys got to excuse me because I don't have it in front of me. I'm paraphrasing. It says my cousin was getting was getting ready to get married, didn't get married because my cousin's friend um, got the vaccine and then wasn't able, I guess, I don't know, was impotent or whatever, or couldn't, I don't know what it was. I didn't pay that much attention mm-hmm. to it. But long story short is at the bottom of it, she said, just pray on it and don't be bullied into your decision. Now you have people who are upset because she has 24 million followers and they feel as though that she's an in, an influencer and she shouldn't be influencing people that way. However, you have the ladies of the view, which is different. And I understand Nikki is an artist. And why can't she tweet and say what she want to say? Exactly. And, and then you have the ladies of the view that say, OK, everybody needs to be vaccinated. And the reason I'm bringing this out is because. It's like, if you don't say what we want you to say, we have a problem with it. But for the sake of conversation, that's why I wanted to say that. But I believe in, you know, everybody has their own choice and should be able to do what it is that they want to do. But what's your thoughts on her being considered an influencer? Um, to young people, yes, but she didn't say anything wrong. She just said, don't be bullied into it. And you're exactly right because, like you said, it's okay for the ladies of the view to voice their opinion about people making sure they get their vaccination with a lot of other people. But if somebody voices their opinion against it, then they, they're wrong. No, they're not wrong. You have to make your own decision and don't let nobody bully you. Just like that, you know, these jobs now, they're trying to say that if you don't, you know, Get your vaccination. We're going to cut your benefits. Okay, we're, we're going to we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Let's okay. stay right where we are. Go ahead, Rugo. Okay, basically it's like this. I didn't see the article, and I'm just hearing this for it's a tweet. Uh huh. No, I didn't. I didn't see the tweet. Uh huh. Um, but but if she's saying she's stating first of all, she's saying that this person is sterile because of the vaccination. Is that is that correct? Yeah, she's saying that. Listen, this is the funny part. Her cousins got a friend in Trinidad. I mean, it's like third, fourth hand, you know, my cousin's little cousin, sister's neighbor's okay. daughter. Go ahead. But, but, but basically, she said they got the vaccination, now they're sterile. Right. Okay, so does Nicki Minaj have information to prove that that person was a sterile before the vaccination? Now, that's the point that a lot of people are making. Now, right. No, okay, she, okay. Does, so, no so, she does so, not. But wait, wait. Understand who Nicki is, though. Just an artist. But, but the, point, the point I'm saying is, even if she's an artist, and she has deniable, and she has proof that's undeniable about the situation, it doesn't matter. It doesn't necessarily matter where you get it from if you have the proof. So proof would be that person's reproductive health prior to taking the uh, vaccination and then afterwards. And she hasn't produced that. You know what I said. Look, being science, I like sound like somebody got syphilis <laughs> and didn't want to tell his fiance. But, I mean, but, but the, but the, point, the point is, is that like there are there before this vaccination has ever come on this earth, there were people, men, who had the inability not to be able to fertilize an egg. Mm-hmm. If you want to just make it pure and simple. So without that, without that data to support where this person's baseline was, and now to say that after the shot, this is what it is. So if this person was trying to have a child prior to the shot, what was the problem then? They weren't. They weren't married yet. All right, well, that's you know, that's not really a big problem. <laughs> they 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 weren't married yet. They're getting married, and I guess the Did wedding is off. Do they know each other? Uh, who knows? I don't know. Do they that, have not but, like, oh my God, I left it in too long. Uh, you know that. Not one. Okay, but the point, the point I'm saying is is that, like, and that's a joke, but if we want to really look at this from, from a really scientific point of view, we have to know where that person was prior to that situation and where they are now. Okay. 
Now here's my here's where I'm going or my issue. They are blaming her because they call her an influencer. But they call Kim Kardashian an influencer. But we know by definition an influencer is somebody who inspires someone or to me and this is my definition, inspire someone hopefully to be better. But we know that that's not the case. An influencer is like a um, a salesperson. You know, it's like, okay, let me get you to sway this way. But I don't put, and, and, and this is not a jab at Nicki Minaj, but the things, and it might be where I'm at, everybody puts whatever they want on social media. We had a president that was putting banana stuff that was off the chain on Twitter and we knew he had no facts but it is who's going to believe her so I guess um like Roland Martin and all of them are feeling as though that she has 24 almost 24 million (coughs) followers so she can influence them not to get the vaccine because I believe it's 61 percent of uh United States citizens that are partially vaccinated now if I'm not mistaken Uh, Don't quote me on that. Please, please, please trust and verify. (laughs) There you go. Air quotes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Trust and verify. Like, look it up. Listen to what we say and just think about things. But like Nikki, I wouldn't be looking to her for science. I'm look. Actually, I ain't even looking for her for rapping because it's like Cracker Jack rhymes to me. But go ahead. Like, would you be more apt to listen to the ladies of The View Dealing with science versus uh, Nicki Minaj. The issue would be is that you have a produced show versus a person that's speaking off the cuff. So if I look at a produced show and the and the um and the and the, the focus, excuse me, is to um, ensure that show has accuracy. I think that the view would probably be a stronger point of um, of reference for 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 information than Nicki Minaj is tweeting. This tweeting, I mean, because like just in one statement, I blew up her argument. Like, did you did you do a reproductive test on this gentleman <laughs> prior to him having a COVID test? Well, what was the sperm count? You know what I mean? Yeah, like exactly. I mean, that one question blows her whole argument out the water. Right. You know what I mean? So, I mean, and don't, don't get me wrong, I, I think highly of myself, but other people may not. <laughs> <laughs> Would that what you one tweet one? is important. But if I can ask that what if I can ask that one question and if that answer is no, then uh shut up. Okay. What's your thoughts, Nick? Because Nick got it Nick Nick tight lip. Go ahead, girl. She got, she got, she got nothing <laughs> uh, you saying, you know, Bona, you listen to the ladies on the view because they're ah listen if they not if not why now one thing with the panel is a bona fide degreed scientist I ain't trying to hear what they're saying here. The point the point the point about the thing about being a don't no no new the only people in news that are bona fide scientists are meteorologists. <laughs> they tell you about the weather. Right. Nobody else is this telling you about their perception or the course of things as they lay out. Exactly. Now I will say, and the meteorologists be wrong too. Hold on. <laughs> and the weatherman is sometimes wrong because they do their percentage. They do their projections in what percentages? Come on now. Okay. Come on now. I'm passing the plate. Oh. <laughs> Uh, not the attorney, not the any. They might have some well, broadcasting degree, communication degree. Hey, that, the name of this show should have been Trust and Verify. That's what that instead of the influencer. All I'm saying is, my comment just there blew everybody out the water. Like the only people in the media who got a scientific degree is the meteorologist. And, and, that's it. That's it. And they wrong. And, and wait a minute. And they be giving them, they act like they're not important. That's the scientists. I'm just saying. They do. They don't give them clout. They don't give them clout. They don't give them clout. Let's shout out to the um, scientists. To the meteorologists. 
<laughs> Give it up to the meteorologist. All right, a round of applause. A round of applause for the people. You know, if we get the weather right, we'll give them a shout out. Ooh, come on, get the weather right. <laughs> you said it's going to be sunny and it's going to be 90 degrees and then turn around and you got to turn your heat on because it's only 50, 55 degrees and you're wrong. Rugal said they deal in percentages. That's why they say that. A 90% chance of rain. <laughs> Let's be real. Just, and you got to look at it, even with physicians. You know, the doctors, it says um, the uh, physicians practicing medicine. So... Let's let's keep it where it's at. But I wanted to uh, I wanted to ask that question because I'm like they're put, trying to put t- to me. This is me, and I want to know your views. This is my view. Um, it's is I feel bullied. I feel bullied, and so I understood what Nikki was saying. Like, don't feel bullied and pressured. It's like, okay, tell me what is this when you say. Um, and I didn't say if I, you know, took the vaccine or not, because I want people to make their own decision because I too realize each and every one of us, let me just say that each and every single one of us, everybody that goes outside, every person you meet, you are an influencer. That's today's footnote, but I had to put that out there first because somebody is looking at you and they're critiquing you and don't know they do an assessment. They kind of like glance like, Oh, Okay. And let me tell you how minor it is. And I know he can't stand a Kardashian. This is how minor it is. How in the world is Kim, who made a sex, sex tape, I'm going to put it out there, and it's supposed to be another one that, uh, what's his name, Whack 100 is putting out there with uh, Kim, where she got famous Kim and uh, Ray J video is another video that's like worse than that one. Nobody really cares. You know why? Because if you've seen the other one, it's like, okay, whatever. And he's talking about getting it to Kanye. Who cares? Who really cares about who she slept with? But she's not an influencer. And I don't know why they deem her an influencer. They deem her an influencer because every last one of us are an influencer. That's why. Go ahead. Go ahead, Rugo. They, they deem her an influencer because she pushes a product. What? They, sex tape? No, no, no. She pushes the dash. They have the... the, the um. She came, she came into that. Yeah, her mom. Yeah, but, I get it. But, but, but still, but the thing is, is that like, if you, if you are, if you are selling something, I mean, this is a, even when you look at the whole issue with um, uh, the the law, the, the voting rights law in, uh, in Atlanta, and you had Coca Cola coming out against it. You know, the Coca Cola is an influencer because not not because they have a market share. They have a market share of this influence. Buy their product, right? So you think about it like this. Does like I was thinking about this the other day. Does McDonald's really need Justin Timberlake to say I'm loving it? No, I've been eating McDonald's since since uh, uh, you deserve a break today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I don't I don't need that, right? Are you but loving the, it? Are you loving it today? But the, but the point is, is that like it's more beneficial for. Justin Timberlake to be tied to McDonald's than just the De- McDonald's be tied to Justin Timberlake. You know, you know what I mean. So, so, um, the, so the issue is that you have a person pushing a bullshit product, like to get caught I'm trying to find you it. Bring the bill, crack uh. the Liberty Bell twice. But the point I'm saying is, is that like he's, he's pushing a product that means nothing to anybody. It doesn't, it doesn't nourish you. It doesn't do. It may help you feel better intrinsically. It may help you like want to be more nosy about how the rich and famous live. But at the end of the day, she's the reason she's an influencer is because she can command a million people to watch an a, a, a episode of nothing. <laughs> an episode of nothing. Think about that. Like, I'm going to consume your life with a half an hour of something that is not going to improve you, not going to give you insight to anything else. But in some people's minds, they see it as pure entertainment. Therefore, those people who time who chime in. Well, let's see who wants to advertise during that time. During that time, well, who wants to advertise? If I have twenty-two minutes, you have eight minutes of, of advertising to do. Who's willing to pay what to advertise during that time? Well, I who watched Seinfeld, and that was thirty minutes of nothing, but it was hilarious. Yeah, because because it was people who came about to say, "Let's make a show about thirty minutes of nothing." We could have did that. Let's talk about these things that are probing questions that people have that no one is willing to answer. 
Let's talk about the the, the, the the awkwardness of what it is to just be in society. You know, that's something. Here it is. I got to watch somebody talk about they getting their nails done in a photo shoot, and that's supposed to mean something to me? It's supposed to. Well, I mean, like, I'm going to reduce myself. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to. Reducing <laughs> myself. Okay, okay. Good morning to those who are just joining in to Shop Talk with Mel. You lovely people know I got my co-host in the building. Let's give it up for Rugo the movie guy. <sighs> and then we got look at look at the bow. Pardon. <laughs> then, <laughs> then we have Nick the voice, the voice of the community. Let's give it up for. <sighs> <Hey>. <laughs> I ain't quick. I don't even know where my mouse is at. I'm, I got to use my hand as the cursor, and that's bad. Um, if you want to join in this conversation, just remember, lovely people, you can also text us, okay? And the, or call in live. 619-902-2287. 619-902-2287. And join in the conversation. And we also have our viewers on here as well. Um, let's go to a viewer. Annette says, people... Speaking on with agreeing with you, Rugal. Um, speaking on the Nicki Minaj situation, people make comments and don't know all the facts before they make the comments. It's inappropriate. Now, my thing is with that, I, I just Nicki is Nicki. If I want music, I'll go to Nicki. If I want facts, I'll research it. <laughs> I'll hear what you say and then go go from there. Uh speaking of the view, how about uh Kamala? Are we doing Kamala or Kamala? What are we doing? Is it a Kamala? Okay, Kamala. All right. Kamala. That's what we're going with, Kamala. <laughs> we were talking about last names that people want to you change. You know what, though? It's talking about that. It is, and I'm just saying that has she been like the quietest vice president in the history of the world? Because you don't ever, I haven't never, I haven't heard anything about her since she's got elected. You know, um. Like, just answer that question. You know, um, now that you brought that up. Well, I guess she's sent on duties. I don't know. But I will say this. the uh, Who was the one that just left with the fly? On it his was Pence. Pence. Yeah, him. With the gray. Yeah, nice gray hair, though. Nice hair. Uh, <laughs> Pence was the most popular to me. Oh, oh, oh. Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe Bob. Uncle Joe, yeah, yeah, yeah. The now president. Yeah. The most popular. Uncle Joe. You think, you think, Joe? Well, uh, maybe maybe it's because of what I do. <laughs> I had a lot of coverage on Pence. Huh? He was the funniest too, though. <laughs> For real. Especially it's, during the debates. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uncle, Uncle Joe beating that dude's head from where is he from Minnesota or something? I don't even remember that guy anymore. You know. Oh, he put him. He put him down. He put him down. Oh my god. Um, Uncle Sleepy Joe, whatever you want to call him, he, would, he put that dude in a vice grip. He was like, I'm going to make sure that this boat come loose. <laughs> <laughs> There's a tire. Uh, that was amazing. Doing, doing that Obama it, ministry, it, it that was. It was, it was. I can't take that from him. But back to Kamala. But we know people like Tamala. Tamala, man. It's spelled the same with a K and a T, so should we be calling her Tamala? Anyway. She was on The View, and let me just get that point out. She was on The View, and before she came out, they tested the women of The View who were all vaccinated, and Sonny, the attorney, and Anna both tested positive, so they had to remove them, sterilize everything, and it was just, um, I can't remember the young blonde's name, but Enjoy, that were there, and then they were taking questions from the audience before she came out. Where was uh, was, um, Whoopi? She wasn't there. Okay. Yeah, she wasn't there, um... But she came on the view before she came, they tested it. And I wanted to say that both of them were vaccinated and tested positive and they had to be removed. Um, look at Nick. Go ahead, Nick. I'm just listening right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Right. Yeah, that just proves it. That, that, that kind of proves the point a little bit. Just because you're vaccinated don't mean you're not going to get it still. So why is everybody pushing it so hard? So your ass won't be in the emergency room, taking away from <laughs> taking away life threatening care from everybody else. Like, we, we need that care for other things like car crashes and bicycle accidents, not the just sick father, ass who won't, who won't get a shot. The great beyond the, uh, Allah, whatever you want to call him, 
has blessed me thus far, and I'm going to continue believing in him until I decide to get that vaccination. Okay. All right. That's all good. That's all good. I just, I just hope that no one breathes on the same muffin that you eat. <laughs> <laughs> the baker. It's the baker. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> it's, it's the baker. Because you remember when it first came out. And it's so funny because let me tell you. While we're talking about this, like below it is giving me all these ads popping up. Mm. Get COVID information. So I guess that's like the key word in the algorithm. Uh, the baker. Do you It was... Do you remember this? I think we talked about this on here. Yes. Um, when it first came out and someone passed away and then somebody brought a pan of macaroni. I think this was a Columbus and they brought a pan of macaroni over to the house because, you know, that's what we do. You know, we bring mm-hmm. food to the house and everybody in the house end up with COVID. And I believe it was Columbus. Don't quote me on that, but it's a true story. So here again, trust and verify. Go check it out. And all of them got it. And remember at the beginning, we didn't know for sure. Well, I said it was airborne because, like I said before, everybody in that end service didn't use the same ink pen to sign in. But they were saying contact at the beginning. You remember that? Mm -hmm. So when you say breathe on that muffin, how do we know that these workers don't have it? Well, that's because they want people to get a test and get the vaccination. You know, so the issue issue is so if you do do happen to... Yesterday, I had a contact with this stranger that was probably, I was like, why is this guy within, like, two feet of me? Like, it felt really uncomfortable. Like, I got dizzy. I know! He's too close! I listen, I know. And it's weird because we social distance so long that it's like, um, you're not supposed to be there. I'm like, I'm like, but why are you always close? Like, you're not, like, is this too close even for regular interaction? Like, why are you so close? Back up. You like, know? you're trying to blow on me. Yeah, I was like, okay. <laughs> you're too close. I'm going to take a step back. Like, you, you're too close. Uh, <laughs> Can I share, share something with you? Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. Now, you know, in April, I was in Houston with family. Don't tell the family's name and don't say what part of Houston. We don't want to say the name, but I was in Houston with family. There were 30 of us together. Oh. Two of the family members, listen, two of the family members did not realize that they had caught it. Mm -hmm. They didn't realize until after they went back home and got tested when they went back home. Okay. Um, Because... These are two very responsible family members, especially the one because she's in the medical field as well. Had they realized it, they would have canceled their trip. But they didn't realize it until they went and took the test because they was around everybody and we were in, you know, where we were at. That's why they took the test when they got back home and realized it. Well, anyway, long story short, out of 30 of us, seven got COVID. Then we were all together hugging, kissing each other, loving my our family out of 30 of us, only seven got it. Nick, I got to say one thing, though. I ain't going to lie to you. For you That's not to be lie. vaxxed. Yeah, yeah, that is a lie. That That is a lie. Um, but for you not to be vaxxed, you show pushing it. Yeah, you take like, a chance she, everywhere. She, she had a front like, row of calls. I'm like, yeah, I'm like. She's she like a skydiver. <laughs> you know, you like a you like a high-speed motorcycle person. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you want those people to be popping with these on the freeway, ain't you? <laughs> Doing you know, 90. Look at her I'm wear her mask saying, on. I'm, I'm just saying that, that that's a lot. That's like almost a third of the people there Abs- that are infected. Yeah, that, that yeah, is. I, I think they must have highly favored. I think God giving you an opportunity to get a shot so your ass won't be in the hospital. <laughs> See, if you go try to influence somebody. Hey, I'm just saying. Bully. I'm, hey, hey, I'm just saying. Like, like you're going to be Man, on one of those commercials. Right? I'm just trying to save you from being on one of those commercials like a smoker, where it'll be like, ah, this oh, is right now. You know what I mean? I'm just, sa- I'm just trying to save I'm you. I've been a smoker too for a long time. Listen, but, Nick, Nick said she tried to prevent from being on one of those class action lawsuits in 10 years. Thank you. Because that's the thing, though. You, there is not one medicine that the pharmaceutical, the pharmacy, pharmaceutical companies make 
that don't, including vaccinations, that don't cause a side effect somewhere or have an adverse reaction at something. Mm-hmm. Not one. So everybody pushing this vaccine and you don't know it. And this, you don't know if this hasn't caused this. Or, there's not one. I want somebody to please, because I'm going to do research too. I want somebody to name one medicine, just one, that does not cause any side effects or might not have an adverse reaction. Oh, good, good luck. Good luck the to that. The thing is, is that you'll never, you'll never get that answer because even if you if you say it like this, you have homeostasis, right? Homeostasis, you know, homeostasis for those is your balance. Go ahead. Yeah. So, technically, food, don't will, throw you out of home, food will throw you out of homeostasis. Mm-hmm. You know, so, so the thing is, is that, like, you got... Millions of people who die from diabetes, you know. Yep. But it's caught. But if you take away medication and you just look at the root causes, some of it, well, they'll type. If you correct me on this, Mel. If you type two, that's because you have, um, you you've taken on too many sugars. Sometimes. Right? Some, sometimes. Sometimes. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean. I mean. So that. So what you're asking? And it's hereditary. You, it can be yeah, yes. as well, but but you know so what you're at, what you're what you're suggesting there is that like the reason why these things exist is to stop something that's far worse than the side effects, unless that side effect is death. You know, then you get a whole other issue there. Okay, let's go, let's go to the viewers. Are you finished? You want to go to let's go yeah, to the gonna, viewers because they're going in. They're going in. They All right, in. they going in. Uh, Mr. McKay said, look at the age of the people that are being influenced. Okay, um, and then he, he actually said, and this is from a viewer, listening audience, not from us or the guest or the host on uh, Shop Talk with Mel. He said that the two ladies on The View, talking about Sonny and Anna, two hours late, hours late. Let me see what it says. The two ladies on The View tested negative hours later. Now, how do, how do you and see that's where the confusion is at because it's like okay, I tested positive and now I tested negative. I'm so confused, and that happened to someone close to me. That happened to someone close to me, and in their situation, their situation was they said that they were um, vaccinated and they tested negative. They went somewhere else and they said they weren't vaccinated and they tested positive. And so that's where it keeps, you know, you, you got to do the research for yourself. Uh, let's see here. Miss Annette said, yes, taking a vaccine, you can still get it, but not as bad as without so survival rate is higher. But here's the thing. And I, and I have to put this out here. It depends on your immune system. And with Rugal, and I can say from the other side, from the other side, where Rugal said, you know, he wants people to take the vaccine because Stop taking up the beds for the people with the heart attacks, um, broken ankles. Uh, Maybe their life could have been saved if the bed wasn't taken up with somebody who refused to get a vaccine. Now, I want to go up here. Uh, Ms. Rudolph said, actually talking about your comment, Nick, about the side effects of the medication. And she said, so you won't take any meds. And that's the truth. If you focused on the Mm -hmm. side and every single one of the side effects of medication, if you look at the end, it says death. But I stopped taking my meds a long time ago. Girl, <laughs> listen here. Medication, I'm going to say this. Um, yes, God knows that he's going to take care of us, but God got physicians out there. And he said, here, take this to live in your life. <laughs> like, And what Rugo was talking about, like diabetes, you have your different medications. I won't say any, you know, diabetic medication, but those things are to help you. You know, for, you know, longevity. Now, I do want to say uh, to this, want to say this for um, Miss Annette said, we all took vaccines as children. Not true. Not true. Because now the ones before, now back in the day, me and my mom was having this conversation and she was saying back in the day, they would be in school and they'd be like, everybody lined up and they got those big things on their arm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but. As I know some parents who, well, they're grown now, they they didn't believe in vaccines. And you remember me sharing, even now, sharing the story, they didn't believe in vaccines due to their religion, you know what I mean, or their culture. And so everybody didn't take vaccines. And there's a misconception of you can't get in school without a vaccine. That is inaccurate. That is inaccurate. 
is need a you need an excuse based mm-hmm. off of your religion. Absolutely. So that's inaccuracies as well. And I hear that constantly. Like, well, we did this before, and you know, I like the view. I'm gonna shout them out still. You know what I mean? And Joy mentioned that. She was like, We all got not true. Not true. You know what I mean? Because some people, honestly, when they know better, they do better. Some people just don't believe in it it, or introducing anything to their body. Now, let me tell you this. I do have an issue with the people that say, oh, no, um, my religious belief, I'm not taking a vaccine. Meanwhile, you got a thousand tattoos. You're introducing that ink to your body. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Come on. And your body, you have to build up antibodies to fight that off because that's a foreign body that you're introducing to yourself. So, again, we're we going to get off of this part and keep on moving on with the show. But you have to make the decision that is best for you. And don't feel bullied. We had that no right. bullying. And I can't remember whose uh, campaign that was, the no bullying thing. Um, but I sure remember Nancy just say no to drugs. <laughs> Just say no. I remember hers. But the um, you have to don't bully people. Don't feel like okay if you're not on my side. Don't you shouldn't say anything. And back to the Nicki Minaj. And I think it's wrong how it's like okay if you're saying what we want majority people to say or going along with us. All as well. You could just put it out there. But if you are disagreeing and saying your thought and it doesn't um, concur with what we're trying to say then, oh, no, we're against it. You shouldn't be saying it, so shut up, pretty much. Come on board or shut up. And that's not okay. What, what's mm-hmm. happening to America? All right, let's see what else we have here. Um, okay, so I was looking at the viewer. Now, influence. That's why I said influence versus salesman. What's the difference? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, there you go. Thank you. Thank you, viewer. Annette said, you know who the no bullying was? His wife, and he was the biggest bully. The one we just had. <laughs> That's right. That's a, look, now you know that said. Listen, that was a long four years. I'm like, I don't remember who that was. <laughs> that if he, I forgot it was what's her name? Like mine, Melania. I was like, what's her name? I just want to forget. All of it. You know, I ain't even lying to you like just that whole time. Like, ah, let's just forget it. All right. Speaking of influencer. Oh, you know what? Talking about him. Uh, Trump. <laughs> you know, he is warned by the judge to obey his, um, the subpoenas out there over his taxes. And he still ain't obeying. And they still ain't putting his money in jail because if it was anybody else, they'd been under the jail by now. <laughs> now, why is that, Rugal? Uh, basically, the statute may not uh, lead, lead towards jail time. Because he's like, no, you're not getting my taxes. He meant that. But here's what's interesting. Now, him being an influencer, this is silly. Now, him being an influencer, because we see what happened, the interaction, all that stuff. But then you have those of us who look like this guy, uh-uh. Like, he can't influence me. You know right from wrong. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's people out there really listening to this. Let's go to the White. Let's storm the Capitol. You know what I mean? So he too, he too is an influencer. But it's up, to, it's up to us to choose who we're influenced by. Now, talk about, let's talk about this R. Kelly thing real quick. I know Rugal I know you can't stand R. Kelly. But... For years, it's not new. It's and it's not. Look, look. You know how we used to be like, uh, I, and I still do. I'm like, hand sanitizer, this was pre-COVID. This is pre-trial, trial, pre, pre-R. Kelly's trial. He did not like R. Kelly, okay? Um, yeah, 2000, uh, no, actually 1997, six. You talking about when he got with uh, Leah? Yeah. Now, 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 let's break this case down real quick. And, and it ain't going to take long. This is going to be real quick because you know that the, um, the jurors are, uh, his fate is in the jury's hand. Now, as of Yesterday. Now he is being tried for sex trafficking. All those women coming up, help help me understand. All those women coming up and sharing their stories, that's not sex trafficking because to my understanding, sex trafficking is like transporting 
or exploitation. You know what I mean? So, so, so this is the situation when you talk about tra- uh, sex trafficking. And you think about also uh, Matt Gates, who's a Republican representative from uh, Florida. What happens is if you take a minor and you take them to another state and you have sex with them, that's trafficking. Okay, because I, I, I'm like, my definition, okay, go ahead. So it's basically, is this like, you know, if you, if you, if R. Kelly took a girl from Oklahoma, took her to California, that's sex trafficking. Oh, uh, you know what? See what now now that now that you brought that up. Hey, if you want in on this conversation, feel free to do so. 619-902-2287. 619-902-2287. And you guys can text as well. Now you brought up something. Remember they were saying that it was he had other like people working for him that would fly the women across, you know, to different states. So he must have been thinking about that. Somebody in his camp had to let him know that they're a minor and that's sex trafficking. That's illegal. Somebody had to be saying something. Now that I think about it, you know, now that you explained it that way, because I'm looking like, is he going to get off again? Because sex trafficking versus these adult women saying how he didn't feed them, how they weren't allowed to talk to um, men and all this other stuff. So I was kind of confused. I, I think if, if they can prove that there was one binder that was that moved with him over, you know, to another state and had sex with him, then he's pretty much dead to rights. The adult stuff, I don't know how that's going to play out, but I don't see how they let him pass on the child stuff if it plays out how I'm explaining it. Okay, especially when he had that woman in that, um, they were saying that a lady would fly him, you know what I mean, would get their plane tickets and all this other stuff. So that, when you mentioned that, I'm like, oh, wait a second, because he did have other people, you know, doing his stuff for him. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, is he going to get off again? And I don't know if these women honestly are looking for finance, financial gain, because he broke. He don't have, he don't have no more money. It's over. How, how do you feel about this? He got royalties. Money is the money is never over. Yeah, you know, some places are still playing with music, so especially if you get exonerated. You know what I mean? So now you oh yeah, the radio's gonna be blowing up if you get exonerated. What you think? Hey, they're gonna be playing. I believe I can fly. That that's listen. That ain't nothing but the grace of God to get off on this one. It will be it will, it will become a church song once again. <laughs> And the crazy thing about it is, if they exonerate him, he's going to continue to do it because this will be the second time that he's gotten he got off, and it's like he's not going to learn a lesson from this. He's going to continue to be. I think he might learn a lesson off of this one. They say it on the on the wall, and this is hearsay. People don't trust this one because I ain't been in the jail that he in or the prison that he's in. They said he wrote like his next album on the wall. I said, oh, in the prison. Probably did. But I think he a nervous wreck. And then, you know, you have people who have gone through things, but that doesn't mean that that's an excuse for you to con- to hurt. And I'm not saying he's innocent or guilty, so don't be jumping on me. But if you have gone through something, I think that's where that saying hurt people hurt people comes from. And then you go and you do the same thing that you know hurt you to someone else. I remember having a young man on the show back in 2011 and he was molested and we were sitting in the studio and I looked at him across, you know, I looked at him in his eyes. He was across the, you know, the, you know, the station, the whatever counter from me. I remember that show. You remember that? And I asked that question. And he couldn't even answer me. So I knew the answer. Now, in my mind, was I not happy? Mm hmm. I was not happy because he couldn't answer, but I loved his honesty. And we spoke after. I said, You need to get treatment. And, you know, you know, from there, I still keep in contact with him. And he did follow up and he understood what I was talking about. But I did appreciate 
how open he was because he could have just said no and lied. He didn't say anything. He just put his head down and I knew the answer. Tragic. Tragic. Now you're dealing with somebody who went through something and now they have money and they're sitting on the top of the world and everybody's happy to be in their camp. I told you guys when I met him, he seemed a couple, we were at the Ritz Carlton in Pittsburgh in the lobby, all just chilling, having a good time in the lobby downstairs. And his conversation was a couple sandwiches short of a picnic. And I could tell that there was some delay. I was like, he's slightly delayed. So, and not to justify his actions because you can be a certain age, but your mindset is younger. And it was like, and, and usually you have those talented people that are delayed. Look at Missy Elliott. Boom. Bam. Blew up. You know what I mean? Hone in on what it, your talent is. But don't harm other people. But they had him as an influencer. And he influenced his people around him because they just wanted a piece of the pie. But how much would you do? And you know it's wrong. And I think that that's probably why those people weren't up there. Like, again, I have my own thoughts. Just like I do with OJ. But that's just my thoughts. He off innocent, innocent. But my my court who a viewer said that he shouldn't be going down. Rache, she said he shouldn't be going down by himself. Those parents and the team need your time. See now, that's where that's where I was going. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait. That's where I was going. Um, they do, and that's exactly where I was going. Those people enabled him. And that's probably why they got up. Some people got up on that stand. I don't know if they lied or not, but it sounded like they probably did to save themselves too. Because you enabled this guy. You're like, he's sitting on top of the world. Like, this is it. And I want a piece of the pie. But if you know something is wrong, how can you stand for something that you clearly know is wrong? Or you think of your little cousin or your little sister, you know, your family member, niece. Like, that's crazy. It's nuts. And then they were saying, and this is alleged, I'm going to use an air quotes for a listening audience. Um, they said that her mother knew. And God bless and rest her soul. I don't want to, you know, be putting it out there like, okay, she gone now. But I feel like they're like, her name is like, they dragging her too. And her family probably like, oh my gosh, here we go. We got to relive this thing. All right, Ruga, I know you want to move on. I know. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I'm good. I'm good. You good? Okay. I'm gonna say one thing though. Go ahead. Everybody's wanting to kiss R. Kelly's behind. He obviously did not come across the right moment. You know, we got some women out there that would have put him in his place, and obviously he didn't come across that right place. He did. He did. Cause she spoke on the what is it, surviving R. Kelly? Oh yeah, he did. He did, but you have those. Oh, yeah, you like purple. But see, yeah. But wait a minute. But but here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. You can have that one, but some people, they don't care. They're just happy to be attached. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I meant. And that's, you know, it's like, but then he said, like, he ruined her career, but she could have went somewhere else. I don't know. I'm not those people, and I don't want to harp on it too long, but I just want people, you know, stand in your own truth and know that you're going to have to face judgment. And if it's not right, don't do it. Don't do it at all. All right, let's talk about the Delta. We got the Delta variant going on out here. Besides that, we got Delta Airlines. They banned 1,600 people on a no, they put them on a no fly list. Uh, You saw the real, um, there's a, there's a vote, there might be a, uh, a, uh, audio issue. What'd you say? You were sounding really, uh, oh, I was talking about the, can you hear me now? No, we can hear you. Okay. It's we can hear you. It's just like, LL, like, get off this walkie-talkie. Uh, <laughs> too bad for you. Understand? Oh, that's terrible. How about now? Am I okay now? No. It's still my sound of walkie-talkie? Okay, hold on. Uh, uh, I, I mean, it may not be an issue for the show. It's that retro, y'all. It's that retro. Okay, y'all should have told me like that. Like, no, it, just, it just happened. It just, it just happened. Oh, it just switched. Okay, let's see. Okay. Am so I good now? Better. Am I better now or no? No. Nope. All right. Back out. It's like. All right. Mm. All right. Let's do this. Let's do this. Like a, 
like a speaker blue or something like that. You know how yeah. blue All right, how about now? Yeah. Here we go. I'm good? All right. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, keep me together, you know? Like, what the heck? Yeah, you just, just, just switched switch when Rubo said something. Oh, okay. You said like LL. <laughs> <laughs> The Delta Bear, let, let's okay. We got the Delta variant. This was a question, real quick. Um, the question was, you, you got the COVID vaccine, and now they have another one, the Delta variant out here, another type of coronavirus. So you have the Delta variant. Does the Delta variant, um, does the COVID vaccine, COVID nineteen vaccine, cover the Delta variant, um, coronavirus? Good question. I don't know that answer. I'll research it for you, lovely people. And I'll get somebody on here that can actually explain it to you. But do do the research on that one. I don't know. And I appreciate the question because I do. I can speak on the flu vaccine. And this, too, is a virus, you know, a virus uh, with the flu vaccine. Now, this I know. Um, you can hear me. OK, do I sound like a walkie talkie? Mm-hmm. OK. With the um, regular flu vaccine, when we had, um, they go and they test it and you hope that that's the actual flu virus that, you know, that comes around when you get the flu vaccine. We lucked out with the H1N1 because that was the actual virus. That was the one. So if you got the flu vaccine during H1N1, you were good. So that's what I could say about the regular flu vaccine. You hope that's the one. Um, I can't answer for the COVID, but I'll definitely check into that, okay? And I don't want to give you guys misinformation at all on this, but research it, look around and do it for you, you know, research it for yourself, and then I'll have an answer for you or some type of answer for you uh, next week. All right, so like I said, Delta Airlines is, um, they banned 1,600 people from flying. And what they are trying to do is they wanted to go across all airlines. So you got 1,600 people on your no-fly list, but they want every other airline, they want to share that information with every other airline. Do you think that that's right? No. Why? Well, no, actually, let me retract that. Yeah, they need, because, like you said, those 1,600 people would be like, okay, I can't fly on you, on you so let me go over here. So, yeah. Okay, what's your, what's your thoughts, Rupa? I think the only issue is tied to what's the, like, let's say, for example, I was deemed not worthy to fly on their flight, but since then I, it, I got the vaccination or something like that. What is the what is the ability for me to be able to get a flight with that other airplane if my behavior has changed since their rejection? Okay, yeah. I, I, I agree with you. Rugal, and that is, I think it's nuts. And yet, let's say this: if you're, if I'm on Delta, and I'm just speaking hypothetically, if I'm on Delta and an airline stewardess or whoever is has a nasty attitude, came to work that day and didn't treat me some type of way, and I responded, not that I did anything physically, but then they decide to put me on a no-fly list. That's totally unfair that I am on a no-fly list across the board because of somebody else's behavior, even though we do know that you respond in your way. Your behavior does not determine how they feel that day. You have to be in control. But I don't think that that's okay. And then they are the competition. So I'd be like, come on. Long as you don't, you know what I mean? And what deter- how did you get on the no-fly list? And usually it's a whole bunch of mouth. It's a whole bunch of mouth and not all physical. Go ahead. So this is not related to to COVID. This no. is just related to um, behavior. They, like, they made a, they were upset because we canceled their flight and they we didn't like the way they responded. So therefore, they are on no flight. Exactly. Oh, okay. I thought this was totally related to COVID. Oh no, not 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 to COVID. Mm-mm. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know. If that's a, I mean, if the if the airline wants to accept that information, that may be good. In some cases, if there's some sketchy behavior but if I get on that list because I'm just unsatisfied with that co- with that company's performance that could be uh, definitely subjective and you know what I you know what I thought about I thought about how much money they lost during the whole pandemic well we're still in it but how much money they lost Maria is like fifty dollar flights here twenty five pretty much twenty five dollar flights <laughs> I'm joking but 
They lost a lot of money. So how much money will they lose when they be like, oh, okay, no, all right, well, I guess I, no, I'm not allowed to fly. I'll go ahead and drive. You know what I mean? Because let's be honest, there's a lot of people still, you know, that's out there that's still afraid to fly. Mm-hmm. You know, so you, you have that. Did you want to comment on that or are we going to go to a viewer? Mm-hmm. No, I'm asking either one of you. Viewer? Oh, okay. Wow. You. Okay. Uh, Ms. Gibson said, if Elvis can get a pass to forgiveness, so should R. Kelly. Sorry, but I'm still going to step in the name of love. <laughs> Elvis? Yeah, I guess it was the issues, some issues with Elvis back yeah, in the day. The yeah. yeah. Remember, he married that little girl. Yeah, Are you talking about Elvis? Because he was with Priscilla Presley. I mean, Pris- I don't know what her name was, but I don't know how old she was. Yeah. But if you're talking, if you're talking about um, Elvis Johnson, gracious, great, great balls of fire. That's a different issue. But I don't. Let's see here. Okay, you look that up. Now here's my next one. When can you date a friend's ex? And Nick, you know this is your question. Why you looking around? With okay, okay. okay. they are a good friend, uh, like yeah, your ride or die, your best friend. If it's an associate or an acquaintance, I would give it some time. Now here, here's here's where I'm going with this. Nick said never. What if your friend dated everybody in in elementary? That was my boyfriend then, so. Like you done dated, I, there is nobody else to date. What you know what I mean? Like, and you're adults now, because you do have those that feel like, oh, okay, well, that was my boyfriend. Yeah, oh my goodness, she dating. Come on, if they're free and you release them, they should be free. So, do you not ever release all the five hundred people you dated in the whole town or wherever? Go ahead. Did you get the information, Rugo? Yeah, she was. Looks like she was fourteen. Yeah, I thought she was fourteen. Okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, he was, he was in his mid twenties, but she she was fourteen. She like in this picture, I'm like, she's an old looking ass fourteen. <laughs> my, my grandma was fourteen when her my grandfather. All right, let's stay let's stay on the show. Let's stay on the show. Um, Roche said that whole friend. Now that now that's what we talking about. That whole friend had been with everybody. And then you just can't date anybody because that's their ex and they have moved on and married to somebody else. They, they, they're they married and then they still talk about their ex and that's not right. How would you feel, honestly, Rugal, from a male's perspective of you're married to someone and they're upset with their friend for their friend dating their ex? I'm married, but they're upset that their friend is dating an ex. Yeah, like you know, she'd have moved on, or he'd have moved on, and the um, you're upset that they date they they're dating your ex. Yeah, that's it. There is no but. There, that's it. Um, <laughs> that I, do you think that's selfish? She she is always free to leave. If if you feel you know that upset, go ahead and go after that love of your life. Don't let me stand in your way. Okay, go ahead, Nick. Uh, I, me personally, uh-huh. I, like I said, it depends on my friendship. And okay. then if you are really good friends like that, or that's my best friend, or whatever, and it was. Somebody that she dated in high school or, you know, like in elementary or dated in high school, have that conversation. She may be okay with it or I may be okay with it. Did you yeah. just say, okay, did you just say, have that conversation somebody she didn't date in high school? We've been out of, out of high school for 30 years. And you know some people, some people just be in that parents about stuff. And you have to have that conversation? If that's your friend, you want to be, especially if you already know how your friend is, and you know if you date ex, you date Bob, and she dated Bob in high school, and you know how she thought about Bob, even though she was somebody else, 
had a conversation. Be like, listen, girl, that was high school. Like, but me personally, nah. My best I, I, friend, yeah, I, I got you, but I mean, just overall, like, wow. If you know how your best friend is, and if she really felt some type of way about this person, oh, I'm listening. No matter who it was, yeah, just be like, listen, what do you think? Because you done moved on. Y'all was in high school. I kind of like him. He got a feeling me. You know, I had that conversation with him. If that's what y'all really, what you really want to do. That's what your best friend. Like I said, build somebody you just cool with and end up. I'm going to do what I got to do. But a best friend, best friend, yeah. I mean, and if this best friend then moved on, now put it this way. She, she moved on. Uh huh. moved on. She ain't going to care. So there's no time limit. No, some of them do. So there's no time limit, clearly. There's no time limit of dating a friend's ex-boyfriend. Yeah, because I know some that have a whole fit. If you date somebody, you date that. Oh, um, you know I used to mess with him. But you used to mess with everybody at the Bristol Hotel. Yes, exactly. You dated him in 1979. This is 2021. You still mad? Child. Child. Like, for real. You know, because you could be missing the love of your life. And if you had that whole friend, just like Mrs. Gibson said, you out. Like you, so you ain't supposed to date nobody because she didn't check off everybody? Sorry, I missed that. Could you say it again, please? Siri. Siri. See, really? I, I have a friend like that too. That, that, yeah. And as soon as you mention somebody, like, now you know I used to mess with. Now you know I used to mess with. Now you know I used to mess with. But damn, who didn't you mess with? Right. So that's where the issue is at. That's where but the thing is. When this friend was messing with this one, this one, and this one, they had women. What? With yeah, you know I used to mess with him. Yeah, but you was messing with him while he was with this one, and he was always speaking to her. Oh, so they wasn't even the main chick. Yeah. They're still getting an attitude. I think people need to just move on, especially once you hit a certain age. It's like, I mean, I, I really don't want to be with somebody my friends have been around, but the um, it, um, I'm just, I'm just over seen all all this extra and reasons to argue and why are we still acting like high school when we are grown mm -hmm. I, I want to put out there the um the Gabby what is it Petito that's it remember the young girl that was uh documenting her life that went missing her and her fiance went across I guess driving across country or whatever. And then she went missing. They had different people um, having a, a issue of thinking that they jumped on the fact that, and she had a bunch of TikTok followers that they, they, they put more attention on her because she was white versus the attention on black missing people or missing yes, persons. Yes. She, it, it's been an ongoing issue with us and, and you know, yeah. Uh, Rugal, do you see the disparity? I don't know who the people are you talking about. Uh, a young white girl went missing in all the news media coverage. And then our, uh, there's black people that go missing and they don't get the same media coverage. Yeah, but not at all. They really don't. It's, it's been well documented about the disparity in uh, coverage and even, you know, the law enforcement actually serving and protecting us versus uh, condemning and potentially uh, killing us. Yeah, that's not a... It, you know what's so interesting? What's interesting is that I went on to TMZ and it's her all over. All over their page. Like different things, the visual, the whole nine. And I'm not trying to sound rude or insensitive, but it's like, okay. You know, and... Not that her life doesn't matter because it does, but it's like I see us a lot of media outlets that are covering her story and her being missing. And I was listening to 
Nancy Grace. You know, I love, oh, I used to love Nancy Grace. Never like this. Why? Never. Why, since the little the baby? Worst. Remember the baby? The worst. I don't know. I, I just never, like, I never liked Nancy Grace. Why? Just never. But nothing about, nothing about, like, I mean, after that whole OJ trial or whatever, you know what I mean? It was just her person. I just, I mean, like, I didn't like her. You believe that she just made a decision and she went off of that? I, she, I think, I mean, she, she used her position for for celebrity, like most people do. But, since, like, I just don't like her. Like, I didn't like this. Like, I've never, like, I there was, uh, what was the show? It was Conquered and Grace, right? Was the show that you said? Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know that. Um, I don't know that yeah. show. But I just know that a lot of her things was a little, um, I don't know why I want to call the mother Tiffany, but she wasn't the young mother who, and she said the the grandparents was looking for the daughter. Remember the daughter was missing. I can't, you know, I, I put that stuff out and didn't get new news. Um, I liked her from there, but I will say that you are correct. She's quite entertaining though, to me. Um, but you are, when she makes a decision, she makes a decision and it does seem as though that there is a lot of guilty until proven innocent with black people versus a white person. They're innocent until proven guilty. And, I, you know, it's like when 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 is that going to stop or do you think it ever will? No, it will not we had a black president, and it never, and it didn't stop anything. So no, was it that man, We had a man choked out for nine minutes, and the first thing they said was, "Well, with his guilt, we had, we had look at his guilt. He did something bad before, you know." What is that about? What What is that about? You have, and you know what? Um, even locally, I remember that one young man. He passed. He got murdered. And do you remember this? When he got, it was a few people to get killed I believe but what they did is pulled up their criminal record they pull up their criminal record after they are murdered why yeah. is that if they weren't if they weren't involved in criminal activity at that point or even if they were there is no reason for it especially when you can have a white person and this is nothing against all white listeners please understand but when you can have a Dylan, whatever his name is, go and shoot up in a black church, kill people, and the police talk to him the way they do, treat him the way they do, take him through the Burger King drive-thru. But you have a young black person maybe being too rowdy or somebody that was out celebrating their... Uh, you know, their, their bachelor party and then get, end up killed by the police for what? What did he do? You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, it's not going to end, and, and I hate to say this, you know, because we need to stand together and we really need to fight this, but I'm sorry, y'all, this has to be brought up as well. Until we can unite and be that one mighty fist, this is not going to be fixed. We have to fix our community first so that our community can fight against this period, hands down. We still got black folks fighting amongst each other. I don't like it. I don't want to be around that one. We still got rival games and everything. If we can get everybody on one page, which we would never, and that's a shame, but if we can get all of us on one page, we would be able to fight that. Maybe we, maybe we would impact. What's going on? I think um, I think that we have impacted what was going on with the Black Lives Matter. That's why we got so much kickback. All lives matter. All, you know what I mean? But it showed that everyone came together, like seeing these injustices. Um, Mr. McKay said black people have to keep on speaking up. Just what you said, Nick, when there's any any inequalities or injustices or folk will keep covering it up. So we have to keep bringing that to the forefront. 
And mm-hmm. some people feel as though that is beating a dead horse. Um, animal lovers, that's just a figure of speech. <laughs> I'm like, don't the animal people don't get me. Um, but we do, we have to keep, um, keep speaking and keep saying things. And I love the, the millennials. I'm not going to lie to you. I love the millennials. There, um, there was a thing where it's like, okay, are you going to march? Or, and I remember being that age, like, yes, yes, yes. And even like with Martin Luther King Jr., all of them, they were younger getting out there. they like, no, listen, y'all ready to march. Y'all done pray. Y'all done did everything. Y'all go ahead and keep doing what you're doing. And we're going to do this. And we want to see action. And then boom, uh oh, everybody nervous and scared. You see, you see what happened. And now you want to be out there in front of the um, White House with barricades and stuff like, oh, it's about to be something major. But then when you saw the difference, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You saw the difference. So it's like, come on, but we're always on. And you know what? Let me say this too. I, I hear this constantly from, you know, some white people. Why are you guys so defensive? And right. Uh, and okay, for the listening audience, Nick the voice, she just put her glasses on her nose and Rugo just chuckled <laughs> if you didn't hear it. Rugo, I want you to answer that. I didn't even answer it. I said, listen to the show. Go ahead. I said, I'm going to ask that question. I listen mean, to the I, show. I mean, I'm, I, maybe I'm lost to understand the context of what this person is talking about. It was just a mm-hmm. random. But, but let's say like this when you think about a. As this, uh, um, people, when you think about people who have been subject to slavery, injustice, discrimination, all of the nations, <laughs> yes. for generations, how I, well, all you know is defend. How, how can you not defend yourself in a, in a situation? I mean, where- wait, 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 Nick, you gotta wait. You gotta wait. Go ahead. I'm good. I'm good. Let her chime in. Go ahead. This is what we get. Oh, that was so long ago. I mean, you guys get off of it already. Everyone else can reflect on their. Everyone else can reflect on their history and the atrocities that are played against them, except for us. Exactly. And and that's only because the descendants of the people who did it are the people who who are saying, "Why are you so defensive?" You know, this thing is because because. Even if you're, even if, because the argument then is, well, we're not the ones who did it. Yeah, but you are the ones who may, perpetu- who may perpetuate a system that is against us. Okay. You, you know, you, if you don't, if you don't see the damage of the past of your, uh, of your, of your ancestors to to go and you, you're not, if you don't, if you don't see that damage and you're not looking at that and saying, how can I further correct it? Then you're part of that problem because you want to deny that it even happened. You know, versus taking a stance and saying, well, I understand that these people made these terrible decisions. How do I make society right going forward? Now, that's never, you never hear that argument. You know, I mean, you hear it from some people, but for the most part, you know, no one's talking about, you know, the, the you know, correcting the sins of the past. And that and that's what we're asking for. Okay. So that's what the sins of the past that have been perpetuated in our everyday practices, even though they may be far from bondage. They are very much aligned to keep you down. Okay, go ahead, Nick. No, I'm just saying I'm part of that system where it's split down the middle, but because there's color in my skin, I'm on that side of the fence instead of this side of the fence with my family. I have family members that are white and come from my. Uh, we all do. We all do. Honestly. And- and but like, so let's folk I, I, I wanna feel. let me ask you this. Let me and, let me ask you this, Nick. Let me ask you this because I don't want to get off topic. I want to stay right here. How do you how do they fix it? So that question was brought to me. He he actually answered that part for the listening audience person. My my, my ten followers. <laughs> so you tell me how do you think they could fix it? Where we don't feel so defensive all the time. Child, listen, them fools ain't gonna fix it. Uh, okay, then, now see, we not gonna call them fools. <laughs> I'm I'm oh, no, no, no. Family. Okay, well, no, we're not talking about you. We, in general, if somebody mm-hmm. came to you, if somebody came mm-hmm. to you and asked you that question, what would be your response? 
how can we fix it? I mean, be a little more sensitive to what we went, what our ancestors went through. Be a little more sensitive to what our ancestors go through. I don't care if it was 400 plus years ago. Be a little more sensitive because it, we are all, like you said, we are all human beings. None of that should have ever happened. We were treated like animals. We're not animals. Like, and some of you still see us as animals. You still get called monkeys and little We are not animals. We all blue. When you cut every last one of us, guess what we all bleed? The same color. Red. So, you skin us alive. We look the same. So, be sensitive and look at it from that point of view. Okay, so, Mm -hmm. okay, so you said be sensitive, so acknowledge. Acknowledge, exactly. Okay, go ahead, Rugo. And I know you touch little, you touch bases on it a little bit. I mean, basically, it's like this: you get people who say, "Well, I don't feel that way," but the part, the part, the issue is that you may not feel that way. But who have you influenced it the same way you do? And then look at the overarching policies that people say they have an issue with. So if there's an issue with voter rights, and understand why people aren't talking about voter rights. If there's an issue with housing, understand why there is an issue with housing. You know, the thing is, is that you taking the stance of saying, well, I'm cool, so therefore you should be cool with me, doesn't mean anything. You, you don't be an advocate in the sense that I'm, a, I'm just going to be, hey, I'm on your side, when you don't advocate for the larger injustice that happens upon us. So well, that's the main thing, is understanding, changing the perspective of what those things are, being aligned with those efforts to, uh, to let other people understand what those injustices and disparities are. You know, just to say you're against it doesn't do anything um, from from that perspective when you're one who may have the voice of many, who may have the the ear of many to change their voices, I should say. Okay. And we do have a lot lot of white people that stand with us. And we definitely have to recognize that. We do. And we thank you. We have a lot of people that stand with us. And we do thank you. But you know, we need your voice to be heard a little bit more because you may be around people that, you know, that, that feel the opposite that you do that are influenced by you because of whatever reason. We need you to voice and just keep voicing it. Okay. You want to add on? No. No? All right. We want to talk about... How- let, let me let me ask this. How insecure do you believe this generation is? Very. You, you say very, Nick? Very insecure? All right, let's... <laughs> what you think, Rule? They... I would say 50%. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of insecurity, I would say. And isn't it interesting? It, you're given, and, and I don't want to say everyone is, but I'm just making a blanket statement. You don't really have to work for anything because let's look at the music industry. And remember back when 